Congrats on the book. I wanted to pick up on one passage from the book and sort of start off there. We are nearing a breaking point in America if policymakers don't relent and reverse hostile oil and natural gas policies, the American economy will retract, just as it did under Jimmy Carter. Inflation will spiral. The quality of life for all Americans will be lowered. That's really stark. Yet you have the oil industry producing almost pre-COVID records, more than Saudi Arabia. Uh, exports are jumping. Inflation's coming down. The economy's OK. Are we doing OK? Well, in that sense, yes. Um, in another sense, no. You know, with the policies that they keep piling on, uh, you know, and increasing regulatory burdens of all kinds uh, that they're piling on, plus everything that they've done, they took all the federal lands off the table, 26% of the land mass in the U.S. that they're now allowing permitting and drilling sure. on. And so that 35% of the productive capacity of the U.S. is about what it is. So suddenly, if we can't keep up and slide backwards to where we're not energy independent any longer, we know what that looks like. We've been there, done that, and it's not pretty. And it does affect all the economy, and it, it affects our politics around the world. But if we're almost producing record levels already, what more could we be producing? if we could fix the policies that you advocate for in the book? You, you could offset, you know, what we've seen in inflation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for sure. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we're not producing what we could be producing. What we're could we be producing? Rig, rig 15 million, down. 16 million, 17 million oh, barrels? Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that much. But, you know, we could be probably a million barrels a day. More. A million mm -hmm. uh, more. Mm -hmm. Uh, than we are, and certainly uh, probably need to with uh, with what's going on. So it, it would help the economy of the U.S., it'd help the American workers, and it, it'd help inflation. It, it'd drive down prices a little bit. So, yes, I, I can see that it would drive down price for inflation. At the same time, more oil means lower prices, and we're already struggling to stay at $80 a barrel, even with another Saudi extension of their cuts. Why is that? Well, you need to look forward two or three years, okay. and and you know demand keeps keeps rising. Uh, hopefully, we'll get by, uh, you know, the depression <laughs> uh, sensitive area that we've been in the last two three mm -hmm. years. Uh, you know, with what's happened here with the economy in the U.S. So, looking forward, we need to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, I'm saying we're nearing a breaking point. And uh, certainly we are here in the U.S. What, uh, I was talking to Scott Sheffield yesterday of Pioneer, and he was like, we could see $100 by the end of the year. He's always been constructed between 80 and 100. That's where the price has to live. Do you agree with that? And if we're at a breaking point, what's the price if we see a breaking point? You know, I, I don't see us at $100 by year end. Uh, uh, Goldman thought maybe 86 mm -hmm. on the high side. I believe they just uh, report that. Uh, I think that's being optimistic. Uh, you know, if we, we hang, you know, high 70s, uh, low 80s, uh, that's probably about where we're going to be. If we unleash more uh, American energy, though, doesn't that wind up hurting the price and then make it harder for you to actually do business? Well, let me, it, yeah, it, it affects price. It, it certainly does. But, you know, we keep waning uh, in rig count. Rig count keeps dropping. Uh, maybe as it should if uh, you're in an oversupplied situation, but we're, we're barely in an oversupplied situation. Had the economy rebounded around the world, we wouldn't be oversupplied. Uh, so it's been lagging. Uh, you know, we keep shooting ourselves in the foot uh, with the American economy here at home, and, and that affects everybody abroad. And so. you, you don't feel like Things are actually okay. Like GDP is holding in, inflation's coming down. Like, are, are you seeing that in your business, or are you see a much tougher industry? You know, inflation, the rate of inflation, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps is waning. Mm -hmm. It's coming down a little bit, which is good. But you never get rid of that inflation that happened. So you feel, feel it's sticky in Continental right now? Well, it you know it hit us about twenty percent. Hit every operator in the field. 20%. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so that's, that becomes steady state. The rate of inflation is still going up. Uh, it's lessening, which is good. Uh, we're glad to see that happening finally. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it definitely had a, a bad effect. Uh, and it sounds the, like that's going to stay, that 20% or a little bit like that, that's in it for, for a while. That, so yeah, I think everybody understands you never get rid of that. Mm. You know, it happens and it sticks with you. It sticks. What about labor? We have the jobs report tomorrow. And I'm wondering um, how you look at the labor market. Like, are you keeping all the people that you want? Are you going to have to hoard labor? Are you going to have to let go of some people if things get tougher? How do you think about it? No, we're, you know, we have a culture at Continental. We don't lay off anybody. <laughs> During downtime, uh, you know, it, uh, they, they suffer, we suffer. and That's it. Uh, we, but we all stick together. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, through those times, so we don't let anybody off. Uh, we have all the the folks that we need mm -hmm. uh, uh, at Continental, and uh, I think the industry does as well. It was it was pinched there for a while, mm -hmm. but today it's not. You have the folks. Um, in the market today, lots of things are happening. Equity selling off. Rates are jumping higher. If rates go higher in the long end for you, does that like how does that affect Harold? How does that affect Continental? How does that affect your capital allocation? Well, uh, cer certainly, uh, interest rates uh, affects everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have debt. Uh, we have debt at Continental, and <clears throat> you know those costs are a real cost. <laughs> so, <laughs> absolutely hurts. Does it affect how you spend money? Do you spend less money, or do you produce less oil because you have to pay more in interest? Absolutely, absolutely. We it affects our cash flow and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, ability to spend in the field. We had to wind up uh, spend more on, on our debt. You recently yeah, became private. The book is amazing because it starts with you going public to really develop the North Dakota part of the, bar, of the Bakken and now kind of ends with you going private. What's the biggest thing that's happened since you were able to take it private that you couldn't have done a year ago? Well, uh, the first thing, the big thing, is that we have 20% more productive capacity through the company. 20%. Really? Yes. Why? Is that just like no earnings releases? Is that what that is? Well, we don't have to prepare for those continuous earnings releases. And we don't have to worry about what the analysts on Wall Street are saying about us. Uh, you know, we're, we're busy finding oil and gas and, and, and also developing more efficient ways to operate. Uh -huh. You know, that's big. And that, that's what we have to do today. Lower our LOE cost, lease operating expense. Mm -hmm. uh, do all those things that uh, make it profitable to run an oil and gas company. So I wonder with the innovation, where are you going to spend them? Where is Harold's innovative brain going to spend more time? Getting more oil out of where it is, carbon capture, and getting methane and carbon emissions out, or is it going to be like doing things like lithium and other minerals that other oil companies are looking into? We're not doing lithium and other minerals. He laughs. laughs. Uh, Carbon capture is important. Uh, that was the right thing for us to do. It wasn't uh, carbon that we were producing. Actually, this is carbon that the ethanol industry basically helping agriculture. Mm -hmm. It's so important to them. Mm -hmm. And that was the right thing to do. And, and certainly, uh, Continental need to lead the way and be involved in it with our expertise. And so we've done that. I, I still spend, spend a lot of time finding oil and gas. Uh, and uh, we're in some exciting basins, of course, and uh, you know I, that, that's what I enjoy. Yeah. As geologists, I like to find oil and, uh, and then uh, produce it more efficiently and effectively. And, and also, uh, I, I enjoy uh, you know, helping the industry and advocate for the industry as well. Which you do, hence this Ham yeah. Institute also. Yes. Um, a couple more questions. You were really, really critical about Larry Fink of BlackRock in your book, particularly the ESG movement. You were very instrumental in trying to move the anti-woke sentiment. Is that over? Like, do you think there's more room to run to push against ESG, or do you feel like things have stabilized? Well, I think, uh, whether I, I think everybody got critical of what was going on with ESG. Mm -hmm. uh, they suddenly realized uh, how bad that was for business, uh, how bad that was for the consumers. 
uh, themselves, and uh, that 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 shouldn't be happening. And there's been a tremendous amount of pushback right here in Oklahoma. Our treasurer decided that any banks that won't deal with oil and gas, we won't deal with them from state level. Mm -hmm. And then some of those call me, put in calls to me to talk <laughs> to our state treasurer. I'm not going to do that. Okay. They got their, themselves in that box and they're going to stay there for a little bit. It's not a popular thing. Everybody realized how harmful and how detrimental that was uh, to single out anybody mm -hmm. like that and uh, try to try to uh, basically uh, uh, use those uh, practices. It's and, not good. And another part of the book, and that ties into the ESG, is politics and how the government needs to change the attitude of how they treat oil and gas. You were a very early supporter of President Trump. I remember talking to you on air at like 7.30 in the morning after President Trump was elected. You had like no sleep and you came anyway. You are not <laughs> yeah. supporting President Trump this time. However, he's still crushing it in the polls for the Republican candidates. Is there anyone that you see that can really help support the industry like President Trump did for you? I look at each, uh, each candidate in the lens of, you know, their outlook on uh, energy. Okay. And so I, I, I'd like me to probably rephrase that of not supporting President Trump because I think he's got good energy policies. And, you know, he's, he's got had good policies all together for America. Uh, you Does know. that mean you are supporting President Trump? Well, I'm, I am in some uh, instances, mm -hmm. uh, certainly. Uh, uh, I think I, I like his policies and, you know, I'm, I'm worried about down the road. Mm -hmm. I'm for whoever can get there uh, and be elected in uh, 2024. Uh, that's, that's who I'm for. So is it fair so it, to say that it, anyone who isn't President Biden you'll support on the Republican ticket? <laughs> yes, pretty much. Okay. Uh, you know, any any extreme that they, whether it's Biden or uh, whoever it is, with those extreme policies out of the left, uh, I'm not for them. I'm for anybody else. If, if President Biden picked up the phone today and was like, Harold, come to D.C., I want to talk to you, would, would you change your outlook? Would well, I wouldn't matter? change my outlook, uh, you know, as far as uh, I don't think he's been a, a good president. Uh, you know, we've had the worst inflation uh, that in 40 some years. Uh, but aside you know, from that, you get upset policy. in the book because he, 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 did, he never picked up the phone to call you. You say he picked up the phone to call the Saudis and Venezuela instead. If he did pick up the phone to you. Oh, uh, absolutely. I talked with him. Mm -hmm. I talked to John Kerry. Uh, you know, I would certainly talk to the president. Uh, and hopefully he would listen to it.